together at the crack of almost 8.30. Well, I don't think I dare eat. I just popped my belt. <laughs> but it's so nice to see you again. It's been much too long since we talked. I hope I didn't uh, chase your friend away. Oh, no, he's not a friend. No problem. Who is he? He's just somebody that wants to buy something. Thank you. Oh, and uh, from you? Yes. And did you? Did I what? Did you sell something to him? Well, uh... Well, you know I can be persuaded to do almost anything if the price is right. And was it? No, actually it wasn't. You couldn't meet my price. Listen, have you tried the Denver omelet here? It's got chopped up ham and little green peppers and well, onions. Well, I don't think stuff. I dare eat anymore, do you? Well, if we're not going to eat, what are we doing here? You're just going to drink coffee? I'm having the Denver omelet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Diet coffee for me. So then, as we started to take questions from the floor, some clown stands up and he wants to know, if I'm elected mayor, how will I feel about women's rights? Ha! How did you respond? 
I told him I'd feel exactly the same way as I do now. Next question. <laughs> yeah, I was really goofing on him. Here you go. Five, ten, eight. Oh, okay, thanks. Well, keep five and remember me next time. It's a real big tip for... <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Anyway, then this great thing happened. This woman comes up. She's real strange looking. She tells me she's a cooking teacher. Mm -hmm. And she has for me her own special recipe mm -hmm. for shrimp almondine. Mm -hmm. And you said... Uh, so glad you asked. Here. Yes. I told her that there was a time in my life when I got toxic seafood poisoning, <laughs> and also that almonds break me out. And she'll never eat it again. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 so I just have this thing about that. Hey, man, what are you doing? Selling door-to-door -door sheet music here? Oh, you got me. No, no, I'm just doing a little moonlighting. Moonlighting in here? Well, I hope you got a piano outside. Afraid not. Playing a kid's party around noon. No kidding, I didn't know you played parties. Yeah, you name it, I play it. You don't pay me that much. No, I do weddings, bar mitzvahs, funerals, <laughs> club dates. On the mighty organ of a Saturday afternoon, I do a ball game, and I'll accompany the choir on Sunday. Oh, man, many talents. Oh, little do you know. When I was 15, lied about my age, got myself a job in a strip joint, playing the piano, of course. Strip joint, is that where you met Tiffany? I told you where I met Tiffany. I met her in Monte Carlo. Was she winning or losing? We are talking about Tiffany Hill, aren't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> she was winning. She was on the arm of the richest man in Europe. That's right. She loves the color green. Uh -huh. Which reminds me, I gotta get my breakfast and get out of here. Yeah, me too. Listen, I loved having breakfast with my favorite therapist. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you later. We'll do it soon. Again. Okay. And I'll see you. Oh, like it or not. On time, three, four times. Oh, slave driver. Oh, thank you. What, uh, what was all this about playing for a children's birthday party? I thought Luke should have a reasonable explanation of what it is I'm doing here, don't you? What is the real reason? I was following Alexander. He made contact with Luke. Do you know what he wanted? He offered to buy the disc from him. <laughs> from Luke? Why are you laughing, Gregory? I think Alex may be right. There's a very good chance that Luke might have it. No way. No chance at all. In fact, I think we should make an offer ourselves. I mean, from an intermediary source, of Natalie, course. Natalie, Natalie, you're being ridiculous. Why? There are two things that Luke Spencer loves, money and power. If the price is right, I think he would sell. Precisely, which proves my point. He doesn't have the disc. If he's given Alexander the impression that he does, then he's just bluffing. I disagree with you totally. What makes you think that? In the first place, assuming that you're right, that Luke does like money, and I agree with you, he does. You know who Alexander represents. He's paying top dollar. Luke would have sold it. Not necessarily, because Luke can be very tricky. In the second place, who is Luke sleeping with? Tell me. An agent of the World Security Bureau. Hmm? So? So if he still had the disc, she would have found it by now. No. We're not making any offer for that disc, not even through a third party. Well, what do you suggest doing instead? We stick with the plan that we've already discussed. We wait for Grant to recover, and we make sure that he gets the microfilm from the good Dr. Gerald. And of course the good doctor has to be killed.